coming up on the Grand Final W Show, we unpack the biggest game of the season. Can the Kangaroos win their first ever AFLW flag or will the Lions reign supreme? We celebrate the AFLW's best and fairest, Mon Conti, plus Premiership D, Libby Birch, joins us on the couch. You're watching the W Show, thanks to NAB. Final week. The countdown is well and truly on. We have a bumper show coming your way today and a bumper panel because not only do you have me, Nat Edwards, as host, you also have Sarah Ollie. Hello. Hello. Two for the price of I one. I like, like it. I like it a lot. This is going to be fun. We also have award winning journalist Sarah Black. Two Sarahs on the panel today. That's not going to be confusing <laughs> at all. How are you? Yes, I'm good. Thank you. I can't believe we're finally here. Grand final time. I, I feel like we're finally here, but, but it's been a big season. It certainly has, and along for the ride is one of our favourites on the W Show. It is Premiership Demon, Libby Birch. Libby, welcome to you. Grand final week. I know you'd much rather be playing, but it must bring back some nice memories for you. Yeah, it's so exciting. Obviously, devastating that the Ds didn't get as far as we wanted to this year, but it is so exciting to see the footy that's being played. The prelims were just absolutely outstanding, and this weekend is going to be nothing short of that. And of course, award season, mm. Nat, Lib, Seth. It is in full swing and on Monday night, Mon Conti was crowned the season eight best and fairest. So of course, she is our star power, thanks to Nab. And Seth, by the eighth round, this was done and dusted. Mon Conti had polled 20 of a possible 24 votes. A very worthy winner and a tough season for the Tigers. Yeah, incredibly difficult season for the Tigers and just a reward for Mon, who really had to carry a lot of that midfield by herself, along with some support from Grace Egan. Um, everyone knows what a superstar Mon Conti is. She's such a beautiful player, Libby, when it comes to her agility around the stoppages, her ability to break through from contests. And, you know, she's such a... Yeah, 23 votes at the age of 23. Like, the future <laughs> is perfect. bright for Mon. <laughs> oh, just her spatial awareness, Sarah, is absolutely incredible and I reckon one of the best in the competition at navigating her way through the most difficult situations at contests. And as you can see there, she just breaks away from pressure and that's what makes her an outstanding player. We had her on credit to the girls, so if you've missed that, check that out. Yeah, it's good part. Uh, I like it. Thank you, thank you. I've gotten better at it. Um, <laughs> but she said that she's never been fitter. So she's playing WNBL now. She's already made the switch to basketball. What a freak. I know. Um, and that the two clubs, uh, the Tigers and the Melbourne Boomers, are working really well together to, to make sure that her body can cope with the workload. But she's absolutely loving life as a dual sport athlete. Well, let's hear from the Tiger Queen. This was the morning after winning the Season 8 Best and Fairest. And Mon conceded even she was a little surprised to take home the big award. No idea. I was just telling you before, um, I didn't even plan anything. I thought I was just, you know, going to dress up and have a good night with the girls on the table. But, yeah, as soon as the vote started happening, I was like, OK, this is really interesting. Came to round eight, nine, I was like, oh, damn, I probably should prepare something. So, um, no, I didn't, didn't plan on it, uh, didn't expect it, but I think that's what makes it much more exciting as well. So a big congratulations again to Mon Conti. Let's see how the top ten shook out, though, because we want to celebrate some of the performances of the other players throughout the season. And, Lib, look at that, 23 votes for Mon, but in second place, hello, four <laughs> players sharing the spoils. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one for me was Claudia Whitford. I thought she was tremendous for the Gold Coast Suns this year, obviously sharing that midfield with Rowbottom and Bonnie Too Good. Uh, absolute star at Essendon. Her contested marking ability was outstanding. So, obviously, that top ten looks absolutely amazing. But Monique Conti just outclassed them all. Yeah, she certainly is a star, is Mon Conti. Now, on Tuesday night, the All-Australian team was also unveiled. It was a really fabulous night at the W Awards. As we take a look now, North Melbourne captain, of course, Emma Carney. What a freak she is because it was her eighth All-Australian team, the only player in W history to make every single one since the competition began. Jazz Garner was in there, Ebony Marinoff with her sixth selection, a couple of debutantes too, 11 of them, Ali Morfitt, and you can see the Brisbane girls in the background. They were <laughs> sort of transported into um, the night, which was really cool, and a couple of umpires as well. And look at that photo. 
Are you a fan, ladies, of the blazer? This is what I want to know. What do we think? I think when I first saw it, it gave me that feeling of at the end of the night and you might be going home with your partner and you're a little bit cold, so <laughs> you asked for their jackets because they were all a little bit oversized, weren't they? So I love it, but Lib, do you reckon maybe get them tailored next time? <laughs> well, I just think it's a great addition to the All-Australian team and I know that they got a little a badge as well uh, and I just think it's great memorabilia for the game and I'm assuming, I'm not sure how it quite works, but if you make multiple All-Australian mm. teams, you get that embroidered on that same... Yeah, which is guarantee. pretty cool, isn't it? And well done, of course, to the All-Australian selectors, wow. one of which might be sitting on our panel somewhere. Sarah Black, give us a wink. <laughs> uh, well, it's Tuesday night. the most night. stressful time of the year. I know it was very stressful. You did a great job. You can't please everyone. That's the one thing I've learnt with these things. Now, well, Tuesday night was a big night at the W Awards, as we've just seen, but it was even bigger on the charged coral carpet. Take a look. Absolutely pumping. We've been on the charged coral carpet. Yeah. Our producer has let us loose, which I'm not sure is the right We're idea. We're going into the wild. Oh, I know. It's going to get a little bit wild. We're going to have <laughs> fun with some of the biggest stars in the AFLW competition. Let's see who we found. I don't get doled up very often, so I really enjoy the process. Everyone's looking amazing. Um, it's sometimes hard to recognise people when you see them all sweaty on the field and then you see them all doled up. It's sometimes like, oh, hey, how you going? Would you rather lose to Essendon five times in a row or be stuck in an elevator for 24 hours? I would rather be in the elevator for 24 hours. That is very much the correct answer. Thank you for that. You are a great preparer in life and in football. So what have you done today? Oh, you know, I got the makeup done, a bit of a, a do of the hair, um, suit on. I don't know, pretty low key this year though. Shake, Shake that ass to me. me. Come on, girl. If you're going to the after party tonight, what's the first song you're putting on? And which teammate do you hope doesn't have access to that music? <laughs> oh, Valerie by Amy Winehouse, 100%. Yeah. I love Valerie. <laughs> Great song. Um, and Sarah Rowe had terrible music taste, so did not give her opportunity to get on it. Would you rather mark like Bonnie Too Good or kick goals like Chloe Malloy? Oh, goals like Chloe Malloy. Although Bonnie does take good mark. It's Bonnie Too Good. She has been killing it this year. I'm liking for her. I don't know Chloe Malloy, so I'd rather take marks like Bonnie Too Good. Would you rather watch the W Show on repeat or sit through a quantum physics lecture for 16 hours? Quantum physics lecture. I shouldn't say that because I'm on the W Show. <laughs> Would you rather watch the W Show on repeat or sit in a lecture listening to quantum physics for 10 hours? Oh, the W Show on repeat, obviously. Why is that even a question? Would you rather watch the W Show or Tagged? Yeah. Tagged. Tagged. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so much fun. But someone needs to remind Ali Blackburn, you do get paid to come on the show, so maybe rethink that answer next time. But how about you, Nat? You're even on the charge coral carpet and you get something in about Essendon and Hawthorne. Always. We always have to do that. And Tilly, big ticks to the captain. She got it right. And now if Monday night was all about Mon Conti, on Tuesday it was all about Jasmine Garner crowned the MVP. What a worthy winner indeed, Seth. And this comes on top of being the coach's player of the year as well. What a sensational season for this kangaroo. Definitely her second AFLPA MVP after winning in 2020 and her third coach's award. So, you know, that trophy cabinet must be absolutely bulging by now. Jazz had a superb season. She's a genuine match winner. We all know how talented she is. Her highlights reel is so much fun to watch. I think that's what why everyone loves Jazz, because she's such a dynamic player and, um, you know, she, she really makes things happen when she has the footy. Now, Lib, I don't need your votes when it comes to the MVP, but why is Jazzy held in such high esteem in the league? Oh, she's just a workhorse, Sarah, and her ability to stay consistent and have that form for so many years now and just be a star of our competition is huge. And one thing I love about Jazzy is she kicks goals. 11 goals from 12 outings this season is huge for a midfielder, a pure midfielder. And I think what makes her so hard to defend inside 50 is actually her height difference. So that's something that's really hard when you come up against opposition sides. When she floats forward as that pure midfielder, it's really hard to match up against a smaller midfielder. It's fair to say there was a bit of noise, not just in the room at the W Awards, but also on social media around Jazz Garner going in as the favourite and probably didn't poll as high as we all thought. 
not taking anything away from Monique Conti, who is an absolute star of the game. She's my favourite player to watch. <laughs> but um, just talk us through, I guess, Sarah, from your perspective, what your thoughts were around that. Because I know a lot of North Melbourne people thought she should have won on the night, but it's hard when you've got good teammates around you. I know. Do you want everything in life? Like <laughs> your, your team's in a grand final for a reason. They're, they've got such depth in their squad. And not to take anything away from Ash Riddell's season, which was mm. also a career best season, absolutely outstanding. And that's where a lot of North Melbourne's votes went to Ash, um, who had 16 and Jazz had 14, which is a career high in itself. Um, so, you know, but then there's people like Emma King, Talia Randall, Emma Carney. Um, there's just so many ruse who caught, catch the eye of the umpires that it's not always going to fall in Jazz's favour as much as we collectively <laughs> would love to see a rewarded for effort. I think that's what it boils down to. And I think we had a, our campaign very much on this very <laughs> show, Jazz Garner, to win the AFLW Best and Fairest throughout the season. We thought she was outstanding, but of course, Mon Conti equally as good in that category. All right, time now to look ahead to Sunday. Three more sleeps, everyone, until the grand final. And this is how we got here. It has been one of the most exciting final series we've ever seen in the AFLW. Probably the most exciting season we've had. And the prelims did not disappoint. North Melbourne held on in an absolute thriller against the Adelaide Crows to get into their maiden AFLW grand final. You can see the elation and the joy, probably sheer relief as well, because Libby, so much had been made about their inability to beat those big three, Melbourne being one of them, and they did that. They knocked off the Ds in the qualifying final and then, of course, the Adelaide Crows. How have you seen North Melbourne's growth this I year? Just, I just think, Nat, that's a really good point you bring up. That can be the key to winning a premiership right there is that everyone underestimates you. You've got your back against the wall. And that they did that. They had that in at some points during the home and away season. And they've proven. They've added a secret recipe. We're not sure what that is just yet because we're not on the inside. But they are delivering some amazing football and are in incredible form. And I just think their ferocity that they've added around the ball and their ability for their tall forwards to compete and win one-on-ones has been absolutely outstanding and they are going to put uh, on a show on the weekend and it's going to be a great grand final. And their coach too, Sarah Black. I mean, <laughs> Darren Crocker, no one could be more excited than him. Um, it was just, look at his little, <laughs> look at that jump how cute is that a 1996 premiership player himself with North Melbourne has the opportunity to become the third only coach at the Roos to actually win a flag it's crazy yeah I spent some time at North Melbourne a few weeks ago and the first thing I saw when I walked in the door were the four men's premiership cups and they've got the teams emblazoned on the wall behind mm. them the two coaches who have coached North Melbourne to a flag Ron Barassi yeah. and Dennis oh, Pagan. Good company, isn't it? Huge Legendary. names. Darren Crocker's name is up there in the 96 grand final. He kicked three goals in that game. Um, so I think it'd be a wonderful story for North Melbourne as a club too. Yeah. We've got to remember that it's been a pretty tough trot for the Roos um, and that the women have brought a hell of a lot of hope to supporters. So that's the Roos side of the equation. Now let's get to the Lions side because they remarkably are into their fifth grand final appearance from eight seasons. And Lib, they had to overcome a fair bit, the injury to Dakota Davidson and also a plucky Geelong outfit in the end, four point victors and a bit of a coaching masterstroke to show, to throw, I should say, Shannon Campbell forward. She kicks the winning goal and that is the difference. And look at the emotion from Belle Dawes there on the siren. This means so much to this side. Yeah, it, they've had their challenges throughout the year as well and uh, I guess they've also been doubted at points when they haven't performed in a, in a couple of games they should have won this year. But wowee, have they been able to perform when it matters throughout the season against the top sides and their game style stacks up. And Baldor's there. She's been so critical in the way that they're playing and the midfield that they're winning. They're tough, they're spirited and they're so hard to come up against because they're intimidating players. And mm -hmm. uh, it is just incredible to have that consistent concept, uh, success across so many years for Brisbane. And it's incredible as well because once again, Sarah, they lost some pretty big names, didn't they? Craig Stasevich has been big on this. He didn't like the fact that the uh, Victorian states came calling Jesse Wardlaw off to St Kilda and, of course, Greta Bodie and M. Bates to Hawthorne. 
and they're there again so it really is remarkable. And what's even more remarkable is that this is the third time they've done this. Mm. They just regenerate on the run so beautifully. Full props to the, to the recruiters out there who have been sourcing these players. Jennifer Dunn's come over from um, Ireland and was really slotted in beautifully in that back line. Poppy Bolts, her development's had to be fast-tracked in defence as well because there's no Kate Lutkins because she had a baby earlier yep. this year. So, mm -hmm. you know, at every turn there's been hurdles. Libs spoke about the games that they dropped. Um, they've shown great composure to, mm. to steady and they love being the underdog. Now, Nat, you alluded to this before, they've, of the big three, beaten mm. the Ds, they've beaten mm. the Crows. The Lions are the next test. They've never done it. Lib, they got awfully close earlier this season. What does that mean to get that close? Do you think they're ready to take the next step and indeed win the flag? Yeah, I absolutely do think they, they are ready. And I remember that game they played against the Lions and they were actually leading up until half-time and then the Lions sort of jumped them in the second half. So they will have belief that they can match this side for as long as they want to particularly with the form that they've, they've strung together at the, the back end of the season. And winning that close match against Adelaide means everything for belief because those close matches are ones that can go heavy heartbreakers or they can absolutely build confidence and build belief. And they will know on the weekend that if it gets close, they have the ability to, to clinch a grand final victory. So we referred to that game uh, that they last played in round four. Well, Dakota Davidson mm. didn't play in that game and well it's fair to say she's in serious doubt for the grand final Sarah uh, the forward she went down with what looked to be a serious knee injury against the Cats the Lions say there's no serious structural damage and that she'll have to prove her fitness later in the week does she play or not I would say that they would name her and then we'll have to wait and see on Sunday. <laughs> I think you have to be watching the late teams. I yeah. certainly will um, to see if there's any late changes there. You're going to give her every opportunity possible. The Lions have got their main training session this afternoon, Thursday afternoon. So um, our own Michael Whiting's going to be there. He's going to be keeping a close eye on Dakota. So keep your eyes tuned to Women's AFL for any news updates It would there. be a massive story, though, if they pulled her out on the morning of a, yeah. a grand final. I mean, Lib, you've been there before. How much would that disrupt and unsettle the group to have that late change? Yeah, I think they'll be prepared for it and that's something that you acknowledge as a group going into the week, that this could possibly be a scenario, but the beauty of what Craig Starchevich has done with this team is its versatility. So they know they have played games without Dakota Davidson and they have performed. So that's not going to be a worry for them. It'll be an absolute bonus if she's out there. I think she will be. I think uh, on grand final day, it's completely different with the way that medical staff treat injuries. Mm. You've got to, um, it's all in. And I, I would say we will expect to see Dakota play. Oh, and that's from a physio herself. <laughs> yeah, you're going to make your way over to Gemma Bastiani for the deep dive. But Sarah Black, I just wanted to ask you, structurally, if Dakota doesn't play, what does this mean for the Lions? Luckily for the Lions, as you said, they've done this before without Dakota and they know which levers to pull. So Shannon Campbell, we saw her late in that game against Geelong, move forward to great effect. She's a really strong body in the contest. Um, so they can do that and, and bring in another player in defence. Um, but what that does is, of course, North Melbourne's forward line without Shannon Campbell, mm. you know, there to sort of control the troops. You Huge. know, there's, it's sort of robbing Peter to pay Paul. So, you know, it's big decisions have to be made. Well, a player that can really put uh, pressure on their defence if Dakota isn't there is Jenna Bruton, which leads us to today's deep dive with Gemma Bastiani. And, Gem, you've noticed that the star midfielder has been used in a slightly different way by her coach. <laughs> Yes, Nat. Jenna Bruton played an important role last weekend and there's a chance, Libby, that she can do it again this weekend in the grand final. We've got some vision here to show she's playing a bit of a different role in the forward line. Can you talk me through why her positioning is so important in this forward stoppage? Well, I just think Jenna Bruton is such an underrated player full stop. She has a magnificent footy IQ and you can see here she's holding outside the back of the stoppage to provide defensive coverage, even if she's playing as a forward. And what that's enabling uh, North to do is to make sure when they lose the ball forward of contest, she is there to gain the footy back and get another re-entry. And it's just such clever play and it's enabling forwards to have multiple looks. Yeah, so she's the one that just keeps sending it back in and, and she's often the one that gets the long kick in. So she wins the footy and then gets it on the boot to gain that ground, doesn't she? It's, it's so hard and it's so smart by Jenna Bruton because 
to be able to have the patience to hold out of a contest like she does is just magnificent and it's been the key to the way that the Roos are playing at the moment, holding balance and width and just making sure that, you know, they've got a contest winning player but then also a defensive player on the outside of that. And we've got a couple of examples now in vision of just how she kind of manoeuvres herself. So she starts trying to play up against someone else, which we're seeing here at Tia Charlton. And then she just waits, 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 and then comes out on her own to get that little bit of space. She doesn't win the ball here, but she's a constant threat on the backside of that stoppage. And here's another example, Liv. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see this will be the midfield continuity that they have at the Roos as well. They understand that Jenna may not start... She may start on a player, but then she's got a role to play in floating behind the back of the stoppage to then execute her role if the ball does go there. And I think that's just the amount of time that she has spent at the Roos and the knowledge in that midfield that they all have. And you think she's the best short kick in the comp? That's an example of that. Oh, I just think Jenna has got the slickest, most elite skills and it's definitely not acknowledged enough. Under pressure, Jenna is able to execute a handball or a kick inside 50 and that's what's made the ruse so potent this year. And she's just so smart, uh, Nat, in terms of just staying away from the contest, being the outlet instead of always going in. So the Brisbane Lions are going to have to be really cautious of that this week. <laughs> they certainly are. Love your work, Gem. One of the best in the business in Gemma Bastiani. And Sarah, it's not just the midfield group no. and that battle that's going to be amazing to watch, but what about those North Talls? No, and the irony isn't lost that you and I and Sarah Black, <laughs> who were vertically challenged, are talking about yes. tall players, but that is what we're going to do <laughs> because uh, that is something that was really on show against the Crows at either end of the ground. Their Talls getting the job done aerially so dominant. I think uh, what Craig Stassovich should be most worried about is that some of the players these North Melbourne girls are out marking are Sarah Allen, Jess mm. Allen, Chelsea Bedell. These are outstanding players in their own right who can match them in the height department. Brisbane are traditionally a smaller backline. Um, I mentioned Jennifer Dunn earlier. Um, she was on in her first or second game the last time she played the Ruse. So, you know, she'll be much more confident this time around. But it's a big task. It is indeed. Lib, what do you do? Do you play a bit of dirty ball even if you're Brisbane <laughs> kicking it into your forward line? <laughs> Yeah, well, I think for to beat, first of all, to beat the North Roos, Brisbane play a back shoulder defence. So they'll try and push the lines for, uh, sorry, the North Melbourne forwards underneath the footy. But the most important thing for Brisbane Lions is to put pressure on the ball in the midfield because those kicks from Jenna Bruton and Jazzy Gardner mm. are the ones that are setting their forwards up perfectly. So I think that's the pivotal part in this game. And what about premiership experience? You've been there and done that. Of course, this is the inaugural grand final for the Roos. They've got a few players who have been there before back in 2018 with the Western Bulldogs. This was the Lions in 2021. They know how to win a flag lib. Is that going to play in their favour come Sunday at Icon Park? Oh, absolutely. For them, it'll be <laughs> another game. It's because they've had that, <laughs> mit, that much experience in the grand final. It's unheard of. It'll just be uh, a normal week for them. And I just think that's going to play a huge part in their ability to settle in the game early. Whereas, uh, you, you know, looking at a side like North, who's, who's almost the underdog in this grand final, uh, in terms of experience, but they've got the likes of Emma Carney, Jenna Bruton and Kim Rennie, who have all played in that 2018 grand final. So that'll be uh, important for them to share their experience to that larger group uh, when the time comes. And then, of course, Talia Randall played in two losing grand finals mm. for the Lions as well. So some grand final experience. But as you say, there are going to be nerves across the board, aren't there? Like, regardless, Lions... Um, ruse, it's it's going to be there. Yeah, absolutely, especially for the Lions who are playing a really informed side in North Melbourne and it's grand final day so despite how much experience you have you are feeling the exact <laughs> same way every time you hit a final or a grand final, you don't know what to expect, there's so much uncertainty and I always remember you know, in that grand final you walk out and you see the Premiership Cup on the stand mm. and it's it's almost strange because you're so close but you're so far away because you're still 90 minutes or so away from winning it. So it's it's the weirdest feeling when you get to grand final day and it, there's a lot to unfold. So I just can't wait. So much at stake. It all comes down to Sunday 2.30 Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Of course, you can stream it live on the AFLW app. North Melbourne and Brisbane. Who will it be? I would like a tip and a best on ground. Lib, we'll start with you. North Melbourne. 
Do you want a points, a uh, number of points? Or? Just, you can just go with North Melbourne. Okay. <laughs> North Melbourne, and I think uh, Talia Randall has been in outstanding form, so I think she will uh, win best on ground. I'm going to go with Brisbane and Belle mm. Dawes. It's the ruse for me and Jazzy Garner. She will be wearing that best on ground medal around her neck. Erin Phillips to hand that one to her. Same here. Ditto. Ooh, the two hello. hosts are green for one. <laughs> hey, and great news because it has sold out. Icon Park mm. is going to be a complete sellout. It's going to be jam-packed, about 13,000 fans also. I know there's been calls to move the venue, but uh, up at Marvel Stadium, it's just not possible at the moment, is it? No, it's interesting you crossed to me for this and not the Premiership experience, Nat. With you don't want to hear about my netball flags. No. Have you won a football flag? Because I have she has. Has. I have, 2019 with South Croydon, thank okay, you bye. very much. But Marvel Stadium is out of action at the moment. We, we've, we sit underneath it here at AFL House and there's currently a truckload of dirt on it. There was the motocross last weekend, so it's, it's out of action. All right, now before we go, Lib, I do want to talk a little bit more about your Ds because I imagine it has been a tough couple of weeks. What's been the wash up after going out in straight sets? Yeah, it's been really tough because ultimately, as uh, you know, previous premiership winners last year, mm. we, we knew we were going to be the hunted and we started off the, re the year really well and we wanted to progress our game plan and, and the way that we evolve as a team. But unfortunately, we, we just didn't quite get it all working when it mattered most. And for teams who have been hunting us, they did it excellently and they hunted us down. And unfortunately, we just didn't perform when we needed to. And, and that's on us as players and, and, the, and the club as well. We needed to be better at the right time. And there's going to be a lot of review and uh, understanding what we can do better and how we can elevate our program again, because this competition is just absolutely outstanding. And it's so wholesome to watch. But also for us on the weekend, it's going to be difficult because we know we could have given more and, and, mm. and be ultimately been there. So um, it's important for us to, to reflect and, and to improve. Lib, you're a super experienced AFLW player and also you've been at Melbourne a long time. Did you feel things slipping away from you during the season and, and feel that slide into, as you said, a bit out of form? Well, I think we had a really good match against North Melbourne uh, late in the season and that was sort of a, a really exciting game for us because we feel like we, we pulled it all together and then we, we had Frio and then we went to Brisbane and we didn't quite execute in Brisbane and that was almost slightly hard timing for us because of the, the finals heading, heading into the finals. What do you think needs to change ahead of 2024? I think that's a question that you know, we're all going to be asking ourselves, Nat, including the players and, and the coaches. And I, I think, honestly, I think we just need to continue to develop our game plan and progress because you, the premiership means that you get hunted and mm. other teams look at your game plan and split it apart and know how to beat it. And then it's on us to now improve and, and lift another level. Well, Liv, you'll come back bigger and better. Thank you so much for being on the W Show. You've been sensational. Thank you. Sarah, thank you again. I remember that 2019 Croydon South flag. Don't you worry. Thank you. Thank and Nat, what do you reckon? <laughs> this two-person hosting experiment, how did it go? Pretty good. I mean, I have premiership experience, do you? Maybe not in the same <laughs> department as you, but that's all right. Never not hot here on the W Show. <laughs> Thanks to it. Nat. There's a grand final coming this weekend. Enjoy it. The Ruse and the Lions. This time next week, we'll know who the Premiers are. Woohoo!